everyone, part I Sam. Welcome to part 12 of our model factory hero Lancia Delta HF Integrali video build. So, we're on to part 12. I think we're well on the way to the late team, maybe 20 parts of this one. But today, we're going to focus on finishing off our interior, which we start well, we made good progress on in part 11. And my goal for the end of today is to get that body screwed in place onto the floor pan. And it's a lot of work to get there. It really is. I, I've said this several times for the video. I looked at the instructions, thought, yeah, I've got a bit to do, but it won't take that long. A day's work at most. And three days later, I've finished it. Um, so a lot of work. Lots of little bits to do. Lots of bits need to go in before the body can go on. And then obviously, we've added some extra bits that went with the kit. Um, so lots and lots of work. But we'll, uh, we'll get there. And as again, as I said last time, thoroughly enjoying this build and hope you are as well uh if you are let me know in the comments down below uh because i've got plenty of these to build in the future and the plan over the long term is to keep building these alongside with the kits as well so there we are anyway let's jump into the video after this short message hey everyone please subscribe to the channel click the bell notifications get notified of our latest videos give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos will always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. Right then, so we're back on the Mother Fatty Hero Lancia, and as you'd know it, we're cleaning up some parts. So these are a few parts, there's not many of them, probably half a dozen to a dozen that have not been cleaned up and we're going to require today. So the aim of today is to try and get the body shell attached to the floor pan. So I looked at the instructions, thought that wouldn't take too long, and it was three days and about 11 hours of footage to get to this stage. So a lot of work, a lot of fiddly bits that you're doing first. Uh, like I say, lots of work to get there. So we've cleaned up our, um, this is the belt brace for the back. This is where the harness is attached to. Now, I'm not being lazy, but I literally have this one part to prime. So it's, by the time I primed it, it's not worth firing the airbrush up. So I've just got the U-Pol Acid Edge Primer. I'm going to give it a couple of light coats with this. Um, let that dry to one side. Um, the body I've actually masked up. Uh, we're going to touch in and respray all the TS17 100 mix. Now, through various stages of painting, we've got a bit of white paint on it. We've pulled some uh, paint off with masking tape. So we've carefully masked it where we needed to. We're just going to touch it up on the outside and inside to make sure we get our clean demarcation of the silver paint. So some very careful painting using the uh, 2 mil Apex. And the wonderful TS sprays, a job easily done. It looks much better touched up. And then we use exactly the same paint on this um, seatbelt brace bar, whatever we want to call it, and it's done. We can now attach all the resin bits to the engine bay. So we've got the main um, bulkhead component in, suspension, turret, parts, and everything in place. Um, it's very lightly screwed in at the back, as you can see here. So just drill these out. Uh, and then screw them all in place with the appropriate screws. So refer the instructions and uh, line everything up and nice and gently screw them in. Don't go too small on the screw sizes. This is resin. It's very easy to forget it's resin and it will crack if it's over tightened or stressed too much. So a couple of screws in the back hold this in and then there's one either side at the front to hold it in as well. Like I say, I picked these instructions up thinking, oh, there's not that much to do. Not a lot at all. And it was a ton of work to get to the stage of screwing the body to the chassis. It really was. So we've got the main, um, what would we call this, engine surround? I don't know, wheel arch, inner wheel arches, I suppose they are. And then we've got the suspension turret in place. Now, these fitted in place perfectly. I test fitted them, checked that they were all lined up, screwed them in place. Test fitted the bonnet later on. The bonnet wouldn't fit. It was rocking on them. Couldn't see why. Took them off, put them back on, and it was fine. And I have absolutely no idea why. It was actually a little bit baffling. We've got this front cross member going in place here as well. 
So this can go in. We have got a piece to go in the middle of this later on, but we're not going to need that today. And like I say, there's a screw either side to hold that front piece on and a screw either side to hold those inner wing suspension turret pieces in as well. So just keep referring to instructions. I've got a Tamiya Pro screwdriver. This replaces the little ones that comes with the Tamiya kits. And basically these screws are the size that come with the bikes. So they are, this is the perfect size. This screwdriver is a little bit more expensive but it's a much nicer feeling screwdriver uh, and the top is uh, at the top turn so it's much more comfortable to use so with those screwed in place we can now set on with the interior so we've got some kevlar composite floor mats which i suppose is what they are for better word so i've used some paper made a template using a pencil to mark the edges and um, we just cut around it to make sure it all fits which it does like a glove then we get some of the decal material itself, which I literally only just had enough to do. Uh, and then I had to buy a whole new sheet, but thankfully got away with doing that. So that fits perfectly. So we can get that in some water and get it in place. Standard decal procedure, just get it in place, get all the moisture out from behind it. I think we use UMP Strong on this one just to set it in place. I knew from Past experience of these decals that we used on the seat backs, didn't we? And we, I know it needed the strong to get it to set. And it's a case of let it do its magic, burnish it all down, hit it with a bit of heat, hit it with the brush again, and job done. And then rinse and repeat for the other side. So nice and simple. As you see, we've got all our uh, hoses and what have you, and cabling, I suppose it is as well, for all the various components and the fire system as well. So we'll root all those later once we get the seats and the roll cage in, but for now they're just loosely placed. Our heat gun to set these decals in place. And then the brush with some strong again, just to give it a final burnish down and make sure it's all in place. And like I say, repeat that through the side. Got a few wrinkles in the side, no idea why. And I couldn't get rid of them. And I had no more material, so I couldn't even take it out. Roll cage, I am very careful with this roll cage. This thing's been a nightmare. It's nowhere near perfect. The joints are terrible on the seams, but it is what it is. This is the best of a bad situation. We had a nightmare in part 11, I think it was, or 10 actually. And uh, we're not going to repeat that. So the roll cage is what it is. It's a roll cage, and most of the parts look hideous. It will be hidden by the car body shell. But for now, we've got a couple of seat belt uh, mounting points to put in. So they're drilled into the side. We've got some photo edge parts we've cut out and cleaned up. And then there's a rivet that goes through and holds it in place. And once we've got it in place, we can position it where we need it, which will be facing forwards. And then repeat for that for the other side as well. Um, so a little bit fiddly, but yeah, it has to be done. And then each one of the seatbelt mounting points on the floor has a little hook that sticks in the floor. And then the seatbelt itself has this buckle piece that goes over the belt like they do normally. We fold the belt through and back on itself. And then it literally slides through a tiny little gap in the clip and anchors itself on the floor. So it's quite a nice way it works. Fiddly, unbelievably fiddly, but I'm glad it's uh, 12th and not 24th. So as we did with the seatbelt, using double-sided tape to secure the belt. So get them to the right length, measure them where you want them, get the tape on, fold it over on itself, and make sure it's all nice and straight and lined up. It's a very fiddly job, even more so now everything's on the seat. But I'd rather do it this way than muck around separately and then try and get the buckles through and what have you. This is just the easier way for me. Seats are looking great. Very happy with these seats. The texture paint look absolutely phenomenal. And like I say, we've got this little buckle to feed through. So we just feed it through, it literally and just fits. Once we've got that in, we're gonna put the seat in place. So a couple of dabs of that cheap super glue I got off Amazon to my products list down below. Go to my affiliate store, and then we get the seat subframes in. So a nice positive fit these, so they glue in really well. And then we can add a little dab of glue, a little yabba dabba do, where we want the seatbelt mounting point. A little bit off camera, I've got a habit here of going to the left. When I've got stuff on the bench, I'm trying to keep out the way of everything, but it uh, takes everything off camera. It's a bit of a pain. And then just get the mountain point in place. It is tricky to do, but persevere. And there we go. We can get it in place and then repeat that for the other side as well. All four points. 
and tedious but unnecessary job unfortunately. There we go, again get the seats in place. Again be careful these are resin seats. And then with all the belts in place on the floor, so both locating points on each side of the seat are in place, we can get our roll cage in at last. So a couple of dabs of glue into the mountain holes. Just be very careful, apply it very thinly. There's seven places in total you want to apply it. Three of the side and one in the middle by the spare wheel. We've just put the spare wheel in, as you can see. We made that up in part 11. And then root our cabling. I'm going to call it cabling because it is technically wire, even though it's supposed to be hoses, where we need it. And then push the roll cage fully home so it's seated where we want. Now, I think one of the most important points I can make about this, no matter how many times you test fit to something, if you've put something in finally, test it again to make sure it fits. So with that, we get the body back on. And yeah, it all fits just fine. Just double checking it all pushes down to its locating points and we're all good. So with the body back off, we can get our, well, the upper part of the belt in place. So one side goes to this mountain point we put on the roll cage. So we're just going to feed it through exactly like we did before. And then with a little bit of tape, we just fold it over itself and attach it in place. And then the rear one feeds through holes in the back that we uh, fixed last time. Over the top of that bar we just sprayed. A little dab of uh, glue I've put on this, a little bit of super glue. And then just using my tweezers to hold it. And then we can repeat for the other side. The tweezers fit in that gap perfectly, which is why I'm using them. Right then, so we're going to glue in place those uh, wiring harnesses we made last time for the extinguisher system and what have you. So we made some um, cable ties, we call them, ties. That was from electrical tape last time, and I'm just going to put a dab of glue on those and glue them in place along the chassis itself on the floor pan inside. So just a quick dab of glue in there, same for the other side, and then we'll just leave it open end at the front and it'll just vanish under the dashboard when we get the main body shell on. And we'll just cut them to length like this and leave them there. And that is those done. So they're looking good. We've got an intercom system to put in there. I think it's a team um, communication headset to put in uh later on so they'll need to be wired up too um but for now we can get our dash in so it's super glued at the two front locating points there's two little tabs that go in two holes we've drilled out and then there's a screw underneath to hold it in and again as with everything at every step we do we pop it on for a quick test fit to make sure nothing's foul on it and it is it's all good so we need to get our inner door cards on the back doors um, so we've got two holes to drill through each side and then these just literally push themselves through so a quick test fit of those with the door panels themselves once we know everything fits we'll take them back off and glue them in place but as always we're going to pop them on test fit the shell make sure it fits and then like i said we'll pop them off a little uh, dab of ca glue and they can stay in place then but they fitted in perfect as the test fit shows right now like I say, test fit is everything. Trust me. Test fit, test fit, test fit. Even if you think, I just tested that and it fits. Anything you change, test it again. Now, one part I forgot all along building this uh, roll cage was the interior mirror. So one thing I did forget here before I glued it in place was to paint it black as well. So we'll do that later when it's mounted in place. Why make it easy for ourselves? And I'm just making note of all the parts we're going to need to clean up uh, and or paint to get this to the stage I want it to be, which is getting the body on. Now we're gonna leave all these uh, ancillary bits for the bonnet engine bay later on. For now, I just wanna get these bits in place. So as you see, we carbon the roof vents in the top there as well. They need paint in black. I should have done it before I put them in. We'll brush paint them later. It's no hardship to do. And uh, we're gonna get the foot pedals in. Now I was gonna paint these and I was looking at them. They've been for the tumbler. They've been cleaned up and they're very nice burr metal. So I thought, you know what? They're burr metal in the real car. So let's drill out the foot pedals and let's glue them in place as is. And they look absolutely superb, especially drilled out. They look really nice. So just pick the appropriate size drill bit and popped it in and drill through all the holes in the pedals. They're pre-marked. So if you didn't want to drill, you can put a wash in there. But for me, the scale of this and the uh, type of kit it is, it's well worth drilling them. Well worth drilling them. And I'm proud to say on this, I've not snapped a single drill bit yet. 
not yet. And that's because I'm using good bits. I'm using shanked bits, which I think are a lot stronger than standard type kind of bits. So they're 2.3 mil, I think it's 2.35 mil shanked bits. And they're what I use all the time. And they're much higher quality. So I've not snapped a single bit yet, which is very, very good. I've come close, but I've not actually managed to snap one yet. But those drilled out look much better. And then with a little dab of glue on each one, we can get them in place and then position them where we need them so they look correct. So while we're there, chuck a bit of a black panel line wash on them to add a little bit of depth to them. So that that dry and we can wipe it off. And then the steering rack. So the steering rack needs a bit of clean up. It's got a nasty seam through its gaiters. So we're just going to clean it up with the edge of a file. And then we'll clean the rest of it up with our sander. So I did plan to put this in this episode, but I didn't actually do it in the end. We can do it in the next one when we do all those engine bay components. Uh, but I did get it all cleaned up and painted in this episode. We've got a mount to uh, place halfway through it. I opted to leave it in half for now, just to make try and make uh, fitting a little bit easier. So as you look, that just goes on there like that. Just keep referring to instructions. They are quite clear and concise. Um, they're not too bad at all. And then we've got some uh, release pins. So they are, um, what were they called? They're not bonnet pins, they're the pins for the boot. So these are the restraining pins to keep the boot lid shut. So a couple of pieces of PE to fold and then a white metal part as the actual retaining pin itself and then a PE hoop as a retaining hoop to do as well. So it's going to bend these 90 degrees with the bending pliers. Widen the holes to make sure everything fits properly. Like so. And then we're going to build these up, but we still need to polish, sand and polish all the boot lid to get rid of any flaws in the 2K. So we're just going to build these up and leave them to one side. So it's a white metal piece through the center of there. And then a little PE hoop that goes over the top. This piece here slots through, connects onto the white metal piece, and then with a little dab of CA glue, holds itself in place beautiful. Okay, so like I say, we'll put that to one side for now. Deal with the other one. And then both are done. And tricky little things, but they look really, really good. And they've got really smart on the model when we come to put them in place. I've zoomed in on this one so you can see a little bit closer. Like I say, really fiddly to do. You need very steady hands. But then we need to flat and polish up this tailgate. So we've got a 3000 grit Tamiya sponge. The 2K is not bad on this, considering the size of it. Um... So it hits it with a 3000 grit sponge, then the 1200 micro mesh, and then the UMP compound and the UMP polish. So uh, nice and simple. As always, just being aware of all the raised areas and edges and don't burn through on anything. White's quite forgiving, to be fair. It doesn't show flaws easily, so it is quite a lucky paint to uh, to have on something of this scale. Um, yes, So, but the paint work's not bad. My 2K is not too bad on this. Uh, the rear uh, reverse lights, I believe these are. We've got a photo etched background on each side. And then a resin clear piece as well, which has all been cleaned up and popped in place using Bob Smith's odorless CA glue. Repeat that for the other side as well. Starting to bring this thing alive now. It's looking good. We've got the inner trim, which had a quite a bit of trouble sanding this originally to get it to fit in place. Like I said, I spent hours test fitting all these parts to make sure they fitted and it's just clips in at the top i know it clips in i sanded it and fettled it so it clips in so a little bit of persuasion and then the screw in place most of these are 1.4 mil wide by 3 mil deep screws uh, except for the body that uses 8 mil long by 1.4 mil underneath we've got the magnet that holds the boot lid down to be fair it didn't really need it held itself down quite well but the magnet certainly helps once we get the other one glued in place later on. So a little dab of glue in there, push that fully home. And then we need to cut out the rear window. So this does have an edge on it. I have sped this footage up. I am not that brave. Use my nice sharp Tamiya decal scissors. We're going to follow the uh, demarcated edge all the way around nice and carefully. As you can see, we've got the heater rear window uh, elements in there as well. It's a very nice piece of plastic, but it has a faint, black line for us to follow and we're just going to go around and carefully cut around it as perfectly as we can 
Make sure you've got clean hands. You don't want to get any super glue or any muck on this or any solvents or anything because it will absolutely ruin it. And uh, have a nice, clean, soft cotton cloth ready for when you cut it off and all finish gluing it all in place to clean it up. But just take your time here. Don't rush it. Parts like this you do want to ruin because you're going to have to uh, go back to Modify to Hero for the spares. And uh, yeah, we don't want to be doing that at all. So with that cut out, give it a clean up with a nice fresh piece of uh, UMP polishing cloth. And then we have our window rubbers. So these are pre-cut, but they need cut into length at the sides. So we've got a little bit of the Bob Smith's odorless glue. Pop it in place and line it all up. There we go, we get the edges and then just get the sides in place on one part. Now the window rubber is kind of handed. There is a, a rib side to go inside, so make sure you get the right side. And then this side, we just trimmed it. I'll show you in a second how I trimmed it. Cut it in place. I trimmed it, tried to trim it with the Zorons on this side. It didn't work because it needed a tiny bit cutting off. So I opted with the old uh, scalpel. And just chopped it off a little bit of glue it's been glued all around at the top as well and it fit perfectly like so and there we go there's our rear window and rear window so like i say make sure you go the right way around i put the ribs on the inside and then we're gonna have a little bit of a test fit because as always test fit test fit test fit like so and it just sits inside that edge and we're gonna put some bobsmiths on there nice and carefully these precision nozzles are absolutely fantastic. I love them. They are very, very, very good and very useful. We're going to apply a nice bead of CA glue all around the edge. And then very carefully, we're going to place the window in place again, making sure it's the right way around. Just making sure it's all lined up. And then just push it home and hold it. Don't get any excess glue anywhere. So don't get it on that plastic clear part. And there we go. Hold it for a few seconds, minute, whatever it takes to hold it in place. And there we go. It's all glued in place. Now we can get our, uh, what are we going to call these? Not bonnet pins, the bootlip pins are going to call them. Quick release pins, I don't know what they're called. Uh, glued in place. Like so, we've also got a number plate to put on the back of this, and we've got the door handle, which we've painted up separately as well. So it's going to cut that a little bit shorter. I put the left one in, it was a little bit long, I had to cut it from the back. So this one, I cut it before it went in. There's already a dab of glue on there. Line it up, push it home, job done. And then we've got the rear window restraint. This is like a plate of metal that stays on the window to kind of keep it in as best as possible. So the window is pre-drilled, the photo has been uh, cut out and cleaned up, it's already drilled, and we've got a rivet in there to hold it in place. A little bit tricky, but the best thing to do is line it up, line it up with the hole and just get it started in the hole. And then, yeah, make sure everything's lined up and the window's still in place, get it all lined up properly. Flat tweezers on the back, on the front, and press, and there we go. There's that one in, and then same for that one as well. And there's one of those in place. And then we can repeat that for the other side. And again, nice touch. Looks really good. And there we go. There's both of those in place. The rear window in. And all we're missing off there is the handle and some number plates. And now we can get the rear boot lid hatch in place. This is a monumental part. It's the first part being attached to the body. We've had it on before. We test fitted it earlier on the build. So there's a couple of little uh, white metal Brackets to screw in place. They are handed to make sure you get the correct size. They're a little bit tricky to get in place, but once you've got them in, just line them up, push them home, grab the appropriate screw. Again, it's a 3mm by 1.4. And my hand's covering it, so you have to just bear with me. So the thing with this thing, it's heavy and very cumbersome. And then with both those in place, there we go. There's our working boot lid, tailgate looking the part and it fits absolutely spot on and then we should have done this before we've got the boot lid in but i knew it wouldn't go anywhere near it we're going to polish it up like we did with the uh, actual boot itself so 3000 tamiya sponge uh used wet and then 12,000 micro is what i've been using lately it's working really really well 
really, really well. Um, and we're going in cross ash patterns. So we're going side to side and up and down, no circles. And that way we minimize scratches. I'm just going to flat all the paint and then bring it back to a more of a less scratchy state using the 12,000 micro mesh and then use UMP compound and UMP polish to bring it to a nice high shine at the end. I am live. I'm chatting to you a lot in the chat. So bear with me. My, <laughs> my hand gesture is giving away that I'm live as I am every morning. Uh, and then dry it off like so. Looking for any imperfections we may have missed. And then hit it with the compound. You can already see the shine starting to form. I do love these martini schemes. They always look epically good. Buff it up. So we use circular motions on this. Not applying any real pressure at all. Just letting the cloth do its thing. And again, be aware of all the edges, raised areas. Uh, any corners where the paint is always going to be thinner. You just take your time. Work your way around slowly. It is a boring job, but thankfully on this, it's broken up into several pieces because we've got so many pieces of bodywork. I'm just going to work on them one at a time. So it's not that bad to do, really. Lift the boot lid up to get in there as well. And then get all the compound off with a fresh piece of cloth. You see, we've got a nice shine already. Paint finish isn't bad, like I say, it's not flawless. Doing a bigger car, I think the 2K's gone off. A little bit because it took so long to spray. I think we should have mixed fresh batches along the way. So we, we've got a little bit of solvent popping here and there. Just a little bit. But we polished most of it out. And for the most part it looks really good. Now we're on the finer polish now as well. So again same method as the compound. Just being aware of any edges or raised areas. Circular motions. Working our way around. So literally it's the roof. Um, the C pillar, the A pillar, the front scuttle panel where the window wipers go, and the bootlet need polishing. The B pillar is going to need painting black to go with the window surround, so we'll do that a little bit later. And then with a clean cloth, um, we'll go around and buff all this up to a nice high shine. It does look really, really good. You can see the shine there, looking really pretty. Very, very nice. Not too bad at all. And there we go. There's our interior done for the most part. All the belts are in, spare wheels in. We've got all our fire system um, piped up, belts are in. Uh, we've got a dashboard in place. And again, just a final test fit. See how we go. Yeah, and that all fits fine. Now, Luke Ward, Woody Boy over at Scale Motor, I asked him to print me up some uh, helmets, which he's done. I'm not going to do those just yet and some of the headsets and a little mixer that sits on the roll cage, uh, which I believe is for team communications. So the car is a CB radio, which I'm assuming is for the stage slash organizers. I don't know. Maybe it's not. Then they've got their headsets in their helmets for talk amongst themselves, and I believe this is for the team communication back at, I don't know, HQ base, wherever you want to call it, back on the rally stage. Um, so it's a separate unit, and these headsets sit uh, on brackets, in the back of the car so luke very kindly designed these absolutely phenomenal job luke did on cad printed them up for me they are very very delicate as you can see so just taking off their support struts and i cleaning them up with one of my suji burrito files absolutely wonderful the he helmets are beautiful too we'll deal with those later on we need these for today because they're going in the car we need them in the car before we can put the body on so just some careful cleanups get rid of any of their points of rogue resin we don't need and then with the earpieces with the built-in mic absolutely wonderful Luke how did himself with these things they are beautiful so I believe there's a Peltor as well I do have some decals but I forgot to put them on I haven't got them yet Alan Parker very kindly printed me some up so hopefully we can get them in situ through the windows later on if not they won't go on sadly and a little dab of Bob Smith CA glue. We can get the ear pieces in. Uh, to be honest, this piece here clicked in place. Uh, Luke designed these so well that they actually did kind of click in place with the help of a little bit of glue. So fold it over, a little bit of glue, clip it in place. Same for the other side. Click it in. There we go. Absolutely wonderful. They look superb. Well done, Luke. Top job, mate. So we've got two of those. 
There you go. There's one of them. You can see how flexible they are. They're very, very delicate, but they look absolutely wonderful. So two of those made. And this little, I don't know if it's a mix amp receiver, what it is. It's got volume controls on it. Uh, and they're going to be mounted ready some primer. And we've masked off that rear window. And we're going to paint that in gloss black as well as the window surrounds for the doors as well. So GX2 gloss black. Three, four coat to this with heavy ones at the end to get the nice gloss finish. Uh, we're going through the Iwata HPC Plus. So we put some light coats down to begin with and then come in heavier at the end. You have to come in heavier to get the gloss coat. But we have fully masked the inside and the outside of the car. We don't want to get any um, black on the window again. We should have done that before we put that rear window in, but kind of impatient. Dying to get the body panels in, and I kind of forgot this needs to be gloss black. So, yeah, should have done it first, but we've masked it off properly uh, with no risk to that rear window at all. And as I say, getting a nice wet coat on at the end is important. It self levels and leaves a nice glossy finish then. And then the rear partial shelf. We've primed a Mr. Surf Sub 1500 black, and we're going to hit it with the same interior color TS100 mixed with a bit of TS17. Uh, it's in two halves this because it needs to go around the fuel filler neck. So, two or three light coats with the UMP Apex 0.2 mil, and jobs are good on this one. Because, say, the TS paint absolutely wonderful, they're just faultless to spray. They prefer wetter coats, so bear that in mind. Can get a bit powdery and rough if you don't put it on wet. But lovely paints. And then all these other parts have been primed with service of 1500 black. And we're going to give them a couple of coats of Tamiya LP5 semi gloss black. These are the door handles. Just thought I might as well do them while I'm here. We're going to need them in the next part of the video, most probably anyway. Um, we need to do the rear boot lid one anyway. So we get continuity on the colour then. And our steering racks there to do as well. There's the steering rack. So again, we're going to paint this in semi-gloss black. We'll paint up, detail paint it a little bit later on. We're not going to install this today. We'll do this next time. So LP5, thinned about 60-70% with Tamiya Lacquer Thinner and Retarder. Uh, we're through the Iwater Apex, uh, Apex, Iwater HPC Plus at about 16 PSI. And same paints we're using on the headsets as well. And we'll detail paint these in a minute. So, beautiful paint CLPs, absolutely love them. Love this Eyewater Airbrush as well. I used one of these for years, uh, about four years ago. And this sits alongside my Apex now as a regular use airbrush. You're going to see a lot of this. But very nice airbrush, one of my favourite ones I've owned over the years, and I've owned many. So, nice to have it back in the stable. Now, we've got some glue on the black, on the black, glue on the back here for the fuel filler neck, which I've kept loose the whole time. Here we go. This is very early on the build. So glue it in place like so. There we go. And then these fit around each side. Just having a quick test fit for now. Perfect fit. Then we apply a little bit of glue at the very back underneath there and on each side piece. And that is glued in place. It hides a lot of the detail on the boot, unfortunately. And then we've got this little, I think it's a vent, is it? Is it a vent for the top of this? I'm not sure what it is. So we line up and in it goes, and again, test fit the uh, the body. Now, it fits on, but I can see it catching on that rear partial shell. So we'll leave it out for now, because I think once it's in, it's not coming back off. So detail paint these. I'm just going with a bit of, um, what should we call it? I don't know. Doing what I think I should do. Bit of, um, I don't know. <laughs> just guessing work here. So I'm going to do the cuffs, the ear pads, uh, and the head in um gloss black this is revel aqua gloss black uh just brush it in place it's just what i thought it looked like looking at headphones of my own they're normally quite a glossy uh kind of soft material kind of leather or pleather so that's why i opted to paint them in just a bit of careful painting we can get those painted up and then using Vallejo model air silver we can do the adjusting slide bars that go in the side as well so Adds a bit of detail to them, adds a bit of depth to them. They look really good, these things. I can't explain how good they look. Luke did a sterling job on these. And I've even got a larger scale helmet that I can paint and fit next to the car later on. More by, by accident than uh, meaning to do it, but needless to say, it's there. And there we go. There's one done. We can repeat that for the other one. And that's looking really, really good. 
And then on the little uh, amp mixer box, we're going to just detail paint those two buttons on the side, which is silver, silvery gold in real life. I think they're separate volume and control knobs for each of the driver and co-driver. And then, like I said, we should have painted this mirror earlier on, but we completely forgot, so we're going to paint it now. So a bit of careful painting with a nice Winsor Newton Series 7 brush and some of model colour. And then we're going to detail paint the gaiters on the steering rack using LP3 flat black. And do the tie rod end in the same colour as well. Like I said, we're not going to fit these today. I have planned to, but I can do them in the next part. We do a lot of those components under the bonnet. So some nice careful painting. And there we go. Now we need some wiring for the headsets. We did this for the CB uh, wire. So I've got a piece of wire and some nice black cable, well, wire of the same size. And we're going to wrap it around and make the coil bit that will dangle off the headset. So nice, simple trick. Works really well. Just kind of guessing the length, looking at it, thinking, yeah, it needs to be a little bit longer, maybe. Push it together, and there we go. There's one wired up, we can snip that off. Uh, cut it to length, and repeat and do another one for the other side. And then drilling out the hole in the side. We already pre-drilled this before we primed, we're just making it a little bit wider. We can glue the uh, wire in place, and then we'll get everything in place and glue it in place later on to the, uh, the little mixer box. So a little dab of glue. Get our tweezers and very carefully push it into the hole we drilled. And it just instantly adds some interesting detail to the headset. Looks really good. So two of those and then into the little box. We're going to put a wire. This will run down the roll cage to the front of the car as well. I have reference pictures of one of these in a replica car. So a bit of a... Yeah, artistic license is what I was looking for before. Yeah, to, to hope that it is in the works cars. I would assume it was. And then we need to make some brackets to hold the helmet. So we've got some uh, plus model lead wire. I've had this for about 12 years. Used it many, many times in different projects. And we're going to make two little flexible brackets that will hang off the roll cage and hold our headsets in place in the car. They're going to sit quite high up on the roll cage, so they're not going to be easily seen. So this is more for you and I to see during the build and know they're in there. But if we open the door later on in the build when it's finished, we should still be able to see them. And I'm just going to push them fully back as far as they'll go with a little bit of glue. Get it in place. Like so. And then grab some kicker. And get the uh, CA glue to set. There we go. Do that for the other side as well. And these can move around now. We can push them back or forward, depending on where they need to go. It's going to close the front hoops up a little bit because they look a bit odd. And again, I've got reference pictures, pictures of these. It is much thinner wire on the real car, but I had nothing thin enough that would hold the weight. So this was the thinnest stuff I had. We're going to put this little mixer box on the top. It's got a little dab of CA glue on it already. Angle down as the real pictures show in the car. Again, hit it with some kicker. And then we're going to pop each of the headsets in. Now, as you can see, we're positioned to here. It's a little bit too far forward. So we're going to push that uh, hanging mount back a touch. To get rid of it. But they look fantastic in there. They look really, really good. They really do look the part. Like I say, it's very flexible lead wire. So it does move around really easily. There we go. As long as you hold with it's glued in place, you can move it around quite easily. And then we can pop the headsets in place where we think they'll go. Now we've got to kind of get them behind the seat, out the way of the seat and out the way of the seat belt. So just be careful. Take your time. Don't ruin all your hard work by snapping parts now. But get it on the bracket and get it to sit naturally where it would hang by gravity. A little bit fiddly. 
well worth doing because these do look absolutely fantastic. Same for the other side, get it in place and then cut the wire to the appropriate size. A little bit out of focus, do apologise. A little tiny dab of glue, you can attach it to that mixer. And then there we go, that's that done there in place. Now, exactly like we did with the hose wiring we did for the extinguishers, we've got a bit of black insulation tape, a ruler, a scalpel, and we're going to cut very thin strips of this and use this as ties to hold the wire to the uh, the roll cage itself. So we're going to run that one wire, wire from that mixer all the way down the roll cage. And all we're going to do is get it in place and then wrap it around itself. It's tricky, takes a lot of patience and time. But it's a case of feed it through, wrap it around, feed it through. Wrap it round. <clears throat> my, horse got, my voice got a little bit hoarse there. I do apologise. I've been speaking for over 40 minutes. And there we go. Like I say, it's tedious, but it's worth doing because not only does it hold the wire in, but it looks good as well. I'm just going to do that all on the roll cage till we get it to where we want it positioned. And then we're going to feed it through that driver's footrest. And again, it'll just vanish under the dash once we get all the dashboard in. So a fiddly little thing to do. Make sure these are pushed right down because they will come back off if not. If they do keep popping up, put a little dab of Siegel on them to hold them. Now there's a protective screen between the fuel cells at the back uh, and the front of the car. So again, we've got some plastic to cut out very carefully. It is again marked on the plastic itself. So we'll cut it as good as we possibly can. In as neat and clean as we can. And again, keep the plastic clean. Don't get any solvents or glue on there. And then this needs you to glue it to both that rear um, part of the bulkhead, not the bulkhead, the partial shelf here, and to the roof of the car. Now, I was speaking to Jamie, obviously built one of these as well. He glued it to the roof, and I thought, yeah, that's a good plan. And I thought, Do you know what? I think it'd be easier for me to glue it to this, leave it angled down a bit, and then put the body in, and then lift it up and glue it in place. So that's what I chose to do. So I ran a pretty generous length of Bob Smith's glue, the odorless stuff, into the back. Get it lined up where we want it. Get it on the angle. Then hit it with some kicker. Now, I did get a bit of kicker on the actual plastic, and it did mark it a touch. Bit of a shame, but hey-ho, it is what it is. And then with that glued in place, you can barely see it because it's nice and clear. There you go. You can see it now. That is our interior done for the most part. So that's looking really good. The headsets look great. They look really, really good. Really add to the uh, atmosphere in the cockpit. They look fantastic. Like I said, we've got some helmets to do as well. So they can be placed in there if we want as well. But yeah, looking really good. So for the most part, that's our interior done now. So again, get the body on. Now, it's a very tight fit on the dashboard and on that partial shelf. So the way I did it was, was push it down as far front as we could. I could look through the back window and see it was just catching on the partial shelf. And then once the front was in, I could ease it back a touch and just manipulate it past that partial shelf. So the great thing is we can lift up the, uh, the boot lid should we need to get in there. There we go. We just lift it up and you just see it's just touching it. And then some gentle persuasion. And there we go. We're in place. So test fitted, all works well. The boot lid still shuts absolutely perfect. I was worried about that a little bit, but everything fits in there great. Uh, really look at the part. Now, like I say, the windows aren't in yet, so I'm hoping I can get through those windows and pop in place those decals that Alan's made. And if not, we'll have to go without them. And here we go. The stage I've wanted to get to, to the, through the whole build is drilling these holes and getting the body screwed to the chassis. So these are nice deep holes you've got to drill straight through. So you're going to need to drill a bit, take the drill bit out, clear the resin, because the resin does clog the drill bits quite significantly. Uh, so don't be pushing the drill bit, or you will snap them. And then get the 8mm by 1.4mm bit, uh, sorry, screw, and screw it in place. And again, if you feel any resistance, take it out, re-drill it. So there's four in, two in either side, four in total to hold it in. You can see they're in. 
and then two at the front so they've been pre-drilled and I'm just screwing these in place this is the last one to screw it in place and that is our body in place on the chassis like I say quite a momentous occasion here just polishing it all up cleaning up all our gloss black and all the body work making sure everything still opens and closes we've got the boot lid open with a toothpick at the minute there are some brass rods i've already got the holes drilled in you get the instructions uh the measurements to do there are brass rods you can use to hold the boot lid open if you want don't know if i'll use them yet i might do but here we go that's it it's looking good if it looks great those headsets look absolutely phenomenal in there the dashboard is absolutely beautiful the seats look great the belts look great spare wheel looks great we've got the delta uh, sorry the lantia logo on that partial shelf now as well that was a decal that needed adding our protective screens in place that's glued into the top of the body as well and we've got the magnet on the rear uh, boot lid as well and the boot handles in place as well so there we go a lot of work to get to this stage a huge amount of work um as i said recently these model fatty heroes you look at a step and think oh that won't take long and there's about 40 other steps you need to do to do that one step. So don't ever be in any wondering that these aren't hard kits to build. They are, but they are buildable. They just take patience, a bit of skill, and, yeah, time to do. Um, so there we go. I've got some still pictures of it as well with and without the body shell on. So you can see things a little bit more clearly. My work's not perfect. I'm not claiming that it is. This is my first ever Model Factory Hero build that I've done. And I am thoroughly enjoying it. I can't wait to get this done because next on the bench will be a Ferrari 250 GTM, which you've got a review of. You've already seen it if you're a patron. And if you haven't, you'll see it on ISM in a couple of weeks, probably. Um, well, you've already seen it actually by the time this comes out because it's already up. And what a great fun kit to build. Really, really fun really interesting and it certainly keeps your mind occupied on how the hell you're going to do things and your opportunity to scratch build things the seat's not straight on that right hand side i have straightened it now it just needed bending back in place i think it got knocked with all the moving around of stuff um but they're great fun kits to build really interesting uh and you've got the opportunity to add scratch building like the wiring the headsets and what have you to do um and we've got the helmets to go in. They're going to look great once we get those in place. It's a shame we could apply the detail in that boot. But hey, it's just how it is. Uh, we know it's there, but the dashboard looks wonderful. I love the dash on this. All the drive of that roll cage, we finally got it in. It was a pain in the backside. Um, but the seats look great. Harnesses look great. And I'm very happy how this is going. Certainly enjoying the build again, but it's a, quite a draining build. So... This is going to go to one side again for a little bit. We're probably going to pick a new project to start. What it is, I'm not quite sure yet. Um, we've still got the Plymouth GTX to work on as well. But I hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I've uh, enjoyed doing it. And uh, yes, great fun. So yeah, let's go back to me with some final thoughts. So there we are. That's where we're at. Exactly where I wanted to be. The body screwed to the chassis floor pan. Very happy with that. It looks great. Um, Lots of fiddly things to do, lots of work to get there, but the interior looks good. Dashboard, seats, all the belts, all great work we did in the last video, coming together, fitted in place, they look superb. The headsets, Luke printed off, look great, they're a nice little touch in there. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing the helmets, and I'll make a nice little addition to the build at the end as well. But like I say, lots of fiddly work, I think that's the thing with these kits, they're not a quick build. They're a journey, and for the cost of them, they should be enjoyed, not rushed. Um, and that's what I want to do with this. So we're going to take a little bit of a break from this now, because the last three days' work whew, was difficult. I've got a new project to start. I'm not quite sure which one yet. Um, we'll probably find out in a bench update in a couple of days. Um, but this is coming along really well, and we're really progressing well to the finish line now. So Hopefully in the next video we'll get the windows in, those rear quarter panels on, the doors on. Um, maybe even the rear bumper. We'll see. We'll see how we progress. Um, and then we can start getting the engine in place, the front suspension, and really start getting this thing finished off. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting it done because A, I want to see it built, and B, I really want to start that really nice 250 GTO we just got. Um, so, yeah, really want to crack on with this. So hope you're enjoying the build as much as I am. And hopefully stick with me through to the end and on to the next build. There we are. 
As always, make sure you sub to the channel, click the bell notification to get notified of the latest videos, and uh, give the video a thumbs up. And please leave a comment. I love reading all your comments. It's gone very quiet on YouTube lately. Views are down, commenting's down. So, you know, help support everybody you watch that makes YouTube videos. Leave a comment, leave a thumbs up for them. Um, because the viewer numbers, well, they are for me, they're down a bit at the minute. So, it is what it is at the end of the day with YouTube. Uh, and as always, if you like to support the channel, keep these videos going. There's a Patreon me link down below in the description uh, below, funnily enough. Uh, if you become tier 2 or higher, you get two week early access on all the videos. So you'll see these two weeks before anybody else does. And uh, There's a load of host of other perks in there as well. And uh, there's also a PayPal me and a Patreon. Uh, sorry, PayPal me and a Buy Me Coffee link in the description as well. And there's links to everything else down there. Everything ism ump me related an email address get in touch with me etc uh, make sure you come and join our community as well there's loads of links there to facebook the group build page off at hangouts the live page i go live every day on my other uh, channel the poor ism scale models channel so all that is down below and uh, like i say please leave a comment love hearing your feedback and that's it so i'll be back with the probably the start of the next project which i'm not 100 percent sure what's going to be yet We've still got the GTX on the go, so we've still got the plastic kit on the go, we've still got the Modified Hero kit on the go, so we need something in between. So it's either going to be another Alpha Models, or maybe even something die-cast. I have a few plans for die-cast, so we'll see about that one. So enjoy the rest of the day, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.